Hello, everybody. I think I'm ready to get started. So we're in kind of an awkward bonus stream hour, since I have some plans in the evening. So we'll see what happens. Since there's not a lot of people here, I think we'll uh, probably do some warm-up TTF until we see a couple of people arrive. Potentially, this is the last Easter stream. It's always a big question mark when they say, for example, if it ends tomorrow, is that like tomorrow midnight, tomorrow 9 a.m., 6 p.m.? So we'll see. If the event is still up on Saturday, I'll do another stream. But for now, this potentially could be our ultimate stream. The big finale. So I guess I'll switch over to PSO. What's awkward about Bomberman is that almost all of their soundtracks are only in extended form. So I do apologize, I'm gonna have to manually move some of the songs. Otherwise it'll literally loop for an hour. But hey, I wanted to hear what the soundtracks were like. Welcome in Parameter. Oh, it has been a while since I used the Hue cast seriously. I think this is pretty close to leveling. So I'm thinking if we get... If it's just two people... I'm thinking we could probably still do some RBR or something to mix it up a little bit. We'll give chat a little bit of time to hop in. I'm gonna try this character with the shield. I don't think he's got like a full proper setup for TTF. He does have Disco Brave Man. He does have 13. He's got... Black King Bar. I'm going to check. I think I have a uh, pistol. He doesn't have a spare twin blaze. His ATP's fine though. So I'm going to run him very quickly on solo. And after that, I think we could do some games. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to get rid of Gracia here, which was providing a lot of resistances. It is very amusing being very tanky in solo play. So yeah, he'll lose defense, he'll lose a lot of his good resistances, but... That accuracy, though. Let's see if it's worth the trade-off. Right now he's using Heavenly Ability, Smart Link, Heavenly Arm, so not fully optimized. But it's, it's pretty solid. I should hopefully have a red handgun in here. I do. I do have S red blade for when I'm just waiting around. Maybe this combination's good enough? Why does he have divine protection on? I don't even- I must have just picked it up randomly in episode 4 and just didn't put it away. I can't think of any other reason for that. So he's got Jaya for Worm Boss, he's got Disco Brave Man for... Uh, oh, he doesn't have a uh, Dark Flow. Uh, actually, I don't know if it matters. Honestly, with this character, he's kind of busted. I might be fine. Worst thing that happens is Dragon Boss takes slightly longer. But I do have Vice with 50 hit and 1400 ATP. The only thing I have to make sure is I just shift it up. So it's possible Dragon will be a bit slow. So that'll go on the list of things I need to do. I technically have a Parasitic Gene Flow. I don't have a solid enough caliber for it though. Hopefully you're doing well in Parameter. I was running some RBR off stream for episode four. I still cannot remember which way to turn in that quest. I want you to know, I did it four times in a row. I did it wrong every single time. It's so sad. Same as Genesis does. Yeah, that seems fair. So I can land heavy special special as a hue cast. That is actually kind of disgusting. <laughs> Why? Man, that is that is some accuracy bonus chat. Look at that. Goodbye. Don't target the boxes, please.
Wow, that's kind of absurd, honestly. Thank you, 13. I love how I don't even need to do like a slicer glitch at all. He just does so much damage. He actually has the accuracy for it, surprisingly. Um. I'll refrain from healing, but I thought about it. Okay, I got invincibility. I do like that he matches his vice, though. So he's got a 50 hit vice. I really can't ask for more. It's pretty much as optimal as it gets there. Expecting more is just kind of absurd at that point. So he might be able to combo kill this boss. I'll build some meter here. So I'll probably need to uh, mag blast. Unfortunately, he's still able to lift off, but you cast damage is so high, it didn't even need to shift to that. Disgusting. Not even remotely close to his max ATP yet. So yeah. Don't even need Dark Flow. <laughs> Today we learned. His damage equals all of it. Doesn't matter. I honestly don't remember if it's worth slime duping this character or not. What does Sky ID even get in slime? I might just do it for the eggs, regardless. So, oh, I didn't put any grinders on the red handgun. Uh-oh, suboptimal. Otherwise, I think his Jaya is actually pretty good, too. Yeah, it's 45 hit. No AB, sadly, but... He's gonna be landing that quite a lot. This enemy is ultra dead, GG. So, I guess I'll slime dupe. Pick up that grinder. One, two, three. Use the grinder. There we go. We're upgrading mid run. That's how it's done. Let's see if we get any lucky drops from this. Probably not. Can he just straight up kill with red handgun? Almost. If he shift us first, can he just kill with red handgun? Yes. Wow. That is silly. <laughs> See that? Look at that. S Red Blade did something outside of boss battle. I did it. The damage actually mattered. One, two, three. And it'll get even better as I get more grinders on that thing. The other thing should be about ready. We'll skip the sun forward. Free shot, please. Thank you. I genuinely wonder how fast this boss is about to die. I'm used to doing it with Hyuka Seal, and he's got more ATP than her. But not by like a ton of ton, since he's so underleveled. Actually, I should do this. Potentially big damage here. Might as well just enjoy a little bit of Shifta since his base ATP is so high. Yeah, that seems fair. So he saves about 20,000 Meseta compared to her already. So his run is cheaper than hers, by definition. So yeah, it'll be exciting when he gets like another 100 ATP or so. And obviously Red Ring at some point.
But yeah, I don't think I've ever done a solo Hughcast run on TTF before. So I definitely forgive Rust. I don't- I think I've literally never done it. Aw. Uh, I was hoping the sacrifice would kill there. So now I've learned, if he levels a little bit, that actually would have killed Heavy into special. Because I, I, I only missed it by what looked like maybe 100 health or less. So literally going up 100 ATP across 6 shots. I think that could happen. Airwell says, Ah, nice, just got back online with Dreamcast version 2. Welcome, welcome. Take the bonk there. I'm assuming Sky ID gets nothing from Sinnohs. Let's just confirm before I waste time doing this. This is a run I have to learn eventually to see if it's optimal. What I should be running. So Mill Lily... Oh, I should check Lilies. Because Sange... Free Sange on Sky is actually not too bad. Slime drops Demolition Comet. Don't care about that. Sinnoh Blue... Oh, Baran's Gifts and Sesta. Okay. So if I'm hosting... I would probably want to kill Baran's. Right now, I don't. I basically just want to clear this as fast as possible. Everyone says, I've uh, been playing since early 2000s. can tell you know way more about the game than me. Uh, maybe. It depends on what you end up running. Well, that's an unfortunate... That is an unfortunate freeze trap position. Tell them to chill out. Um, you know what? I feel like being greedy. Let's be greedy. Let me do this. Here we go, chat. Greed kills. You ready for the greediest kills? They could drop something I want. Welcome, Dango. Oh, look at that greed kill. Mmm. Mmm. Sometimes they don't perfectly annihilate each other if I'm off in my position. But fortunately, we just end him like this. Hopefully you're doing well, Dango. I'm a little surprised by that mech gun angle. Like, kind of disgusted me that that didn't auto-target. Not gonna lie. Oh, mech guns, you do such silly things. Uh, yeah, I'll take that, actually. So yeah, we're just breaking off Rust. I said that before, I don't think I've ever done this with Hughcast. Uh, I'll take a Monomate. Let me think, is there any other grinders I can use on this gun since it's not optimized? Nope. Oh well. We're just gonna do hashtag Hughcast things. So, Red Handgun gives me the highest ATP ranged option to stunlock this for single player. Ideally, I want Twin Blaze, so that way I can apply my ATP to the screens without actually moving the monitor. Oh, missed the main monitor. That sucked. Slightly too fast there. I gotta get used to the red handgun rhythm. It's not like super difficult, but it's just something, you know, when you when you twin blaze everything on your other character, you gotta relearn the timing. This should be it though, assuming I don't whiff. Oops. Come on. Welcome try. Seriously, there we go. Am I getting punished for not escalating? Wow, I got punished hard for not escalating, apparently. Well, anyway, let's see what we do here. So yeah, ideally I would Twin Blaze so I can hit multiple monitors, stun lock, apply my ATP via Fireball, which is very silly. Seriously, you did like the only attack I can't attack during. What a jerk. Oh, I thought he was going. Um, host. Oh, come on. Chat, that is so. Un Can we talk about how unlucky that is? That is unlucky. He had three other attacks he could have done. So unlucky. 
I thought he was doing that attack the first time. F in the chat for that scape dog. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I really like new mop up Operation 4 Force only. It's okay. Honestly, I think. I think like two or three casts is faster with two forces. You can only Gafoe stack so much in that quest, and the rest just comes down to blitzing them. So fortunately, I did lose my safety measurement versus the boss. Okay, easy kill. Hope you're doing well, Tiggy. We're doing our first few casts run. No dark flow, though, sadly. I'm gonna get Fuse Trap there for free kills. Rafoe stack. There's enough enemies where you can't do that, though. I don't know. To me, it doesn't sound like the most fun thing. I would imagine just, like... This is it before. Like, probably, like, two rangers. Preferably both cast. Freeze trap the whole room and just charge arm them out of existence. I feel like it's just so much faster. You have one force debuffing and the other stacking Gafoe. That's about it. Arguably, you could get away with raw moral three casts. So anyway, we went up to that platform to spawn that enemy. Sky ID does get Psycho Wand chance in theory. Wow, he can actually combo kill at this ATP. That's disgusting. I didn't even berserk him, but it relies on crit, which is fair. Put down some freeze traps. Should be fine here. Um, I don't think I have like a super ideal weapon for this phase either. So if I had to redo the run with like good equipment, Dark Flow, Swamp Out, something for Girasol. I don't have a Master Raven to use here, which would be nice. I probably should have brought Charge Ray Gun in hindsight. That's fine. We're just getting used to the run. I want to see what his damage is like here. Does oh, he can one-shot it now. Oh, that's actually huge. Okay, maybe I don't need Master Raven then. If he can also do this without Shifta, that's big. That'll speed up solo runs later. The target swap as I shot was the saddest thing I've ever seen. The bullet went right through the intended target. Rip. I'm gonna have to teach people how to dodge these spinners. Oh, I feel like the trick is to not look at the screen and only look at the minimap. Yeah, I don't have. Well, I mean, I guess I could vice this phase. Ooh, he's whipping too much. I'm gonna heal. So he can't special special, which is fair. I don't think he should be able to do that. Okay. So we learned we got a little greedy there going for uh, heavy special special. It's not consistent. Okay, what are you going to do? Oh. That sad moment where if I'd stepped one step over, that would have dodged. Oh, if you were gonna go up and down, I was definitely gonna berserk you. Uh, this will minimize the damage I take. Or it'll aim poorly, that's fine. I think I commit. Yeah, I think I commit here. Thanks, Vices. Okay, so I still have a weapon for when Falls gets close. I don't have a good long-range gun. I mean, I think my red handgun has some hits, so it's not like the worst thing in the world, but definitely could do better for options on this phase, specifically. Oh, 
little too slow. On the plus side, we're about to get Milo Eula potentially. On the downside, we could get trolled with full screen falls. Seriously? Short cycle chat, really? That is the worst feeling for Cass. Almost dodged it. More importantly, I dodged the grants. Okay. Big damage time. Let's end this fight. I built meter on dragon for this specific purpose. Oh, I'm out of range? Seriously? Vice, oh, please. I wish this character had the equivalency of Yashmanikov. Wow, I got double short cycled. Oh, that's so unlucky. That's so unlucky. Oh, what a jerk. Please don't short cycle me again and please don't go full arena. There we go. Much better. <laughs> That's what should have happened. Oh, you short cycle me again? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's supposed to go between like two and four times. We got two doubles. Game, please. You're wasting my healing items. How rude. Just perish. What a jerk. I disapprove that short cycle. Disgusting. So anyway, um, I don't feel like damage was like a huge issue on the Final Falls phase. I would probably need like a really high hit LNK 38 combat, I think, to deal with the Ring Around a Rosie phase. But that one wasn't too bad. See, unfortunately, I lost a lot of time on Bolt Up. So for me, it's just making sure I maximize Red Hand Gun's grinder for that fight. Because, like, phase two was fast, Worm Boss was fast, Dragon Boss was fast. Bull's spinner phase was a little slow. By, like, maybe about, like, six seconds. Or more accurately, I call it phase two, but I think people call it phase one. But after you clear the spinners, which I think I did okay on, where it shoots the spinners out, I think I did maybe five or six seconds slow. The other one was just bad luck. Like, I, I don't I don't really care about that phase. I think we had enough damage, it didn't matter. Final phase, the triple short cycle was kind of brutal. That added at least a minute. Because that's all the iframes were on the worst possible locations on that boss. And it went full screen more than not against me, which is unlucky. Anything fun in the shop before we do multiplayer? A 50 hit drain beam. So we'll sort our inventory out a little more. So let's put away... I'll leave his Gracia on for when I'm doing other runs and don't need the accuracy, aka forest. Um... I guess he was mostly fine here. Although, actually, I just noticed Red Hand Gun is dark percentage. Maybe that's actually not too bad, then, to make up for no charge. Yeah, there's a couple opportunities I could have S-Reddit bladed on the final phase to refresh. So, I think I could trim that by at least a minute 30 with, like, one item change. The rest is just down to Falls RNG, sadly. Okay, so I guess we'll do some RBR. I'll bring in a cast. Not this one, though. So yeah, he definitely feels much stronger at doing TTO. And I think with the new shield, with the accuracy, it feels pretty good. So his shield is hyper-optimal. The 15 accuracy on him means that I can actually land normal heavy specials on every target due to the 15 accuracy boost. But I think Red ID is pretty good at hosting uh, RBR. Between uh, being able to freeze trap and confuse trap everything, I feel like the small number of enemies means Hunter just really picks them off fast without needing to worry about ranged options. 
So if there's people that want to join in, we're going to go ahead and do it. I think I saw Tiggy in the lobby. Not sure if Imperimeter wanted to hop in or not. Love this character just casually carry. Yeah, see, if I had Twin Blaze, it would have been a little faster. Uh, we're just doing episode 4 RBR. For now. It is even beat. If that makes a difference for people for joining. Denoted by the 800, the 8 digit of the 100 digits. Ooh, Dango's here. No work today, Dango. But yeah, if there's other quests the team wants to do, by all means. I just figure we haven't done enough RBR. And I figure chat deserves a break from my uh, TTF grind. State holiday. Interesting. Marco has joined us. I was gonna say, who is Marco, just to confirm? Is that in Parameter? Do this. The European one. I was gonna say, that doesn't limit it down for me, sadly. <laughs> I was like, there's a few European players that hop in. Oh, there we go, Marco Hunt. There, it makes sense now. No worries, you can hop in. I think it's good to have a variety of players on stream. So we'll do a few of these, and then we'll probably swap out eventually. Now you want to shoot the trap, last swan? Whatever. Right, chat? Shake your head. Now it works? Whatever. I'll confuse trap these on the off chance that they do something. Oh, hey, photon crystal that I can't equip. Um, I want that grinder, but I want that photon crystal more. <sighs> okay, chat, I'm going to try to remember this. It's right. It's right the first time. Put a freeze trap here since there's Pyrogorons in case Tiki wants the Robarda. Oh, so I gotta change the music at some point. It it will go on for hours if I don't. It's not bad. I see team did not hit the switch, so I'm gonna go hit it. I paid attention. I did it, chat. I love the random traps in this quest. They're not like blocking doorways, they're just kind of off to the side. Like, oh, did you want to go in the little forest? Perish. Uh, I think I'll freeze trap this. I don't feel like dealing with this, being real with you. Another one is so lucky. 
I could switch out the Girasol for Vivian for more damage. But I just figure I don't really feel like messing with my TTF setup. It's like quote unquote good enough. So I'm just gonna put Confuse Traps down whenever there's monsters that aren't freezeable. Just because it means. Really? I'm getting a luck material again? Well, goodbye, Escape Doll. I'm slowly remembering, so we go left here. Then after the warp, I think, is left again. Actually, I'll freeze trap this. I think we got them close enough that Sword could be useful here. As long as I'm just throwing traps down every wave, it just makes the run go really fast, to be real with you. What a jerk. So I can afford to be pretty aggressive here with trap usage. So there's a warp there, so we have to take it. And I think it's left at the warp. I'm gonna save a couple of freeze traps for a later room. Oh, my bad. <laughs> well, I'm basically just spamming my traps. As long as they're out, they're out. But I guess if we have enough freeze traps to cover, we could do it. Yeah, this wave I'm not messing with. Get frozen. <laughs> Melee you with twin blades because I can. Uh, I think it's through here. Let me go ahead and switch this on before chat goes insane. Ooh, nice music. Nice event egg. I'm gonna take a little detour to save the group time. So we're gonna take my telepipe. And then team will set up a telepipe when we need to leave later. So I'm going to put down two telepipes, one here and then one afterwards. This will save uh, not a ton of time, like maybe eight seconds. It means I've reached the room slower, which is a little unfortunate if I'm needed damage. Oh, I didn't realize somebody put a telepipe there. That was smart, actually. Saved me the walking trip, potentially. I like that idea. I think one thing that I don't see other players doing as much, especially if they're playing like solo cast. I know it's left, I know it's left. <laughs> I'm like, that time I remember, it's left after the warp and then after that I don't remember. I think I got most of the pattern down. Team will shoot that, nice, nice. Oh, power material, I gotta go back for that. That's unfortunate. All right, be right back team. But anyway, what I was saying with that is that, uh... Time save with the telepipe is kind of nice. Most of these enemies are pretty easy to kill, so I'm not, like, necessarily required for the clear. It helps if I'm here. And I think what helped me a lot when I was doing this, oops, somebody telepipe. Somebody telephone. <clears throat> Actually, we can do it in the next room, I guess, technically. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll put that there. So I want to be nearish to the switch. I'll I'll hit the switch. Team doesn't have to worry about it. They could just go immediately to the other telephone. Well, anyway, so in practice of doing this and splitting and doing other things, I do feel like the Confused Trap versus the Satellite Lizard allows you, in case you forgot to bring Melee as a Ranger, to actually do something, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I'm going to take the Telepipe. I'm going to wait to see if everybody else is good. Oh, you're getting items. Then I'm just going to take the Warp then. There we go, somebody, so Tiki already set it up for next time, so don't need to worry about that. 
getting tele uh, Tiki's telepipe. Or if I don't see you, I'll telepipe again. Welcome, Master Lynch9. Hope you're doing well. I'll telepipe into this room in case you're looking for it. Figure it's a little closer. But anyway, having the Confuse Trap out for the Satellite Lizards means that you can actually get a back attack on them. Is this stage the crater? Uh, Technically, it's a uh, Desert 1, I think. In Episode 4. I was going to say, I think it's not this way. Okay, so after we work back, it's... Right, right, left, left, right? Is that the pattern? One day, chat, I'll remember this pattern. Uh, Case in point, so while I'm waiting for the team, this kind of makes sense to Confuse Trap them. That way I could just set up in melee. So if I had Excalibur here, for example, I'd be going to town with how clumped they are. A little happy freeze trap down for everybody. I don't really understand why Freeze Trap works on Hucus Seal sometimes and not others. My theory is that it's it's specific to like the floor. Like something about the floors in certain dungeons cause the trap to be offset more than it should be. And I just can't shoot it at all. We saw that a couple times the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a Telepipe. I'm going to take Tiki's Telepipe. Thank you, Tiki. Yeah, let's save ourselves like a 40 second walk. At least I know where to telephy. That's the most important thing in the quest. Otherwise, I just lose like a few seconds going left, right, left, right, left, right, which you'll see me do all the time. Sorry, chat. I, I will never remember this despite running it like 14 times. Other than I know it starts off with right. Yeah, I got six freeze traps left, so I gotta be a little careful. I'm gonna save two for the final rooms, but even in single player play, if I have. 20 freeze traps. As long as I use a couple of confuse every now and then, I don't need to worry about it at all. When I'm playing multiplayer, I'm more likely to freeze trap the Pyrogorons since Rebarda is the weakness of those enemies. And similarly, if I see a group like this, I just leave them confused so that way they stay near each other. I still got Niven Egg. Uh, rest in peace, other escape doll. Operation Protect Tiggy. Oh, he was in mid leap. I was wondering what was happening there. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna save three for the last room. In the meantime, I'll just cleaver them. Goodbye, these yellies. Uh, I'll just use a regular confuse trap here to keep them clumped. And that also means they're more likely to turn their backs on you, the satellite lizards, so a lot of the times you'll actually see me charge arm them in that same scenario. Here's a room where there's so many targets, it just makes sense to confuse trap. I think my general rule of thumb is unless I'm looking to save freeze traps, if I see more than six targets, I will probably confuse trap. It doesn't happen like super often, but it happens enough in quests that you'd be surprised how useful it is. Or if you're not planning to clear the room, you might as well as throw out a confuse trap for free kills. Happens sometimes. So yeah, I have exactly one freeze trap left that I can use. The Rappies are going to injure themselves pretty heavily, so I can combo kill them now. Even if they weren't double uh, debuffed. Yeah, so here I probably want to start burning my freeze trap. So I got one here. The final wave isn't really worth freeze trapping. It's more this room and the Goron Detonator room. And you can see, like, this level of crowd control just means that our team just really, really quickly kills things. Thank you for following, Master Lynch. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Sometimes I actually cheese these enemies by shooting them while they're stuck in this room, rather than actually entering this room legitimately. I'm gonna throw out my last freeze trap, because I don't have any other purpose for them other than this room. The Skip Rayman, simply no hit percentage. 
So these Rappies can be kind of annoying. If I have a Spare Freeze Trap, I will use it so I don't die to this. I will probably need assistance from the team, please. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sometimes I leave a Freeze Trap here just so I can get through them. Why can't I target that? There we go. Sadly, no hit on that uh, Disco Ray Man. Did I do the box check? Okay, somebody did the box check for me. I always forget the first time you come out of one of those. You technically can hit boxes immediately to the left of the door. So it looks like somebody hit that from there, so I don't need to worry about that. Okay, pretty solid run. I'm happy with that. I will put away some random items. Probably put away the Dark Blue Twin Blaze for now. Gonna hold two more items. Since we have already cleared the quest before, we get free escape dolls. The escape dolls are not really that important. And there we go. That was the quest. So we'll do this a few times. It's worth a decent amount of XP when it's an RBR. As you can see with the four-man group, we got pretty close to 180 XP a second. So that's pretty pretty good, honestly. And with the enhanced drop rate, it makes the quest worth running. The reason we do it on red ID is because it could give you Heaven Strikers. And uh, it also has a small chance at Disco Brave Man, which is always nice to get. There's no zoos, so I think green ID is a little less appealing. Normally there's a lot of zoos and those kind of go for B101s in other quests, but not this one. Which is also a good thing for people that don't like dealing with the zoos. So if you're not feeling confident with your uh, sniping with Vulcans, it's easy enough to do that. Well anyway, let's advance the song forward or it will loop forever. We heard a good 10 minutes of it. Let's see what the next one is like. Toy World Stage. Interesting. But yeah, like one cast alone with 20 freeze traps can shut down that entire run, which is also good. It doesn't have any uh, healing circles, so like lower level casts might be a little more hard stuck. But like near late game casts can do whatever they want. Or if you got good freeze trap growth, you won't run out generally. Or if you have two players, you won't run out. If you have 10 between you, or 10 each between you. Welcome to Ton 2, hope you're doing well. So we still have to find Dango a Parasitic Gene Flow. <laughs> I love on my screen, I just saw Dango basically hide in the corner. <laughs> it's like in the corner of shame. And again, this keeps him close for sword strikes. And since none of us are really abusing range too heavily, they should stay mostly grouped. So it's very easy for just a pair of hunters, honestly, to leave it up. You don't even need, like, rangers in the quest. Rangers are still good, don't get me wrong, but... Honestly, when you have, like, a, a fast single-target weapon, there's not usually a lot to kill. So if there's only... I know it's right. <laughs> this this I'm not gonna fall for your tricks this time, Doors. I would say if they were ever going to customize this quest, I would love if they just locked the doors that were fake. It it doesn't it changes literally nothing to the rest of the run, but man oh man, to not have to memorize which door is the right door is a nice feeling. Which is confusing from the series of there are warps, and there are a couple points where we Potentially do want to backtrack, but not fully backtrack. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. Oh, Tiggy's got it, Tiggy's got it. Take that trap that really should never hit anybody.
So yeah, I'm here to make basically Dango's life easier. So I'm just gonna run up. Somebody will shoot the freeze trap, which just happened. Either me or the, the ranger that can see it. And then it's GG. So you can see we're just kind of hard locking basically all these enemies. If I kill the Pyrogorons, Tiki could do whatever he wants. Nice combo kill. Since there's more than six, I'm gonna confuse trap this. Damn, I guess wrong. Oh, I got flipped. You know what it was? I knew it was left, but I got confused which left it was. It's technically right on the minimap, but I forgot it's when you enter. When you enter, you go to the left. Try to remember that. Yeah, I'll just freeze trap this. If they happen to live, GG. Uh, there's enough targets here. I'm just gonna confuse trap them. Get rid of these. Protect Tiggy. Live by one HP. That is so sad. I sort of throw out more fire traps in my combos. Like when I'm walking up to these guys to so make sure I get the combo kill. Fire trap will ensure that when I'm playing single player. Uh, I'm gonna say no to this wave. Thank you. So you're mid hop. That's fine. <laughs> Somebody will kill you. So let's go back. Get the items there. Want to go through the center here. Nice, I could get another try grinder. Trap, go boom. See, so yeah, I think I'll do what I did last time. I'll telepipe. I think Tiki put a telepipe down last time. So once you go beyond where I'm going, I'll just take the telepipe back to save some time. There we go. That is much more efficient. That way I'm here to freeze trout. Look how easy that room became. Oops, I shot it early. That wasn't my bad. This good liberator, no, not worth not worth it. Um Five is like borderline whether I'm gonna freeze that or not. Welcome Diz, hope you're doing well. I know it's definitely left here. Ooh, they kind of split up a little bit. That's fine. I'll just slowly hunt them down. Use trap territory. So again, this just means the satellite lizards are no longer generally attacking Tiggy. And if there happen to be Rappies, sometimes they just bonk each other and die. I love that Rappy died so fast it didn't register it was dead. Shoot those for checks. right near the warp. Yeah, we're doing this quest in particular during Easter. Because not only do I think it's a solid quest in general, but just from the standpoint, it boosts egg rate. I'm sure some people are looking for last minute eggs. Because potentially this is the last stream for PSO for the Easter event. Where we go on break. Oh, just barely not hit him, that's so sad. Dango's gonna Ryuker now. Look at the teamwork.
Yeah, if you can seal does like slightly not enough to combo kill without optimized weapons. But if you have a force and they Rafoe or Gafoe, then it usually kills anyway. So most of the time I'll combo kill close enough. Oh, my bad, I didn't see the freeze drop there. Kill you real quick. Okay, so we know we know it's not this way. It's right after the warp. It's right after the warp. Tiki's got that one. Synchro's actually full. <laughs> Put a freeze drop down. I'm gonna save three for the final area. I'd like to use two in the Goron Detonator room, maybe one on the final. So I'm just gonna go crazy here. Generally also, if you see Pyrogorons that have weakness to ice, you will also more often than not Use a freeze trap to be in sync with your force. When I'm not with like really heavy forces, then I'll probably confuse trap in that same scenario. Uh, so I'm gonna put down a telepipe. We should all take dangos. There we go. Anything there. Goodbye, lone trap. Yeah, I think I've been on a roll with PDs and Easter eggs off stream. I think I'm back up to 85 of both. Minus whatever I picked up recently. Well, I guess not including might be a better phrase. So you can see we're just shutting down these waves super hard. Welcome, Callum. Hope you're doing well. I think this is right. <laughs> yeah, be careful, Callum. There is a big patch issue. Maybe double check before you get too far to see if they fix the unrecruitable character problem. There's a big reason I don't like playing things the first week they're out. They've, I think they went through like four patch versions already in two days. Yeah, they were in like 1.04 already. Yeah, I'm not sure when that character appears, because I haven't played the game yet. Oh, I like the freeze trap. Let it rock. So I still have four freeze traps, which should be good. So just be very careful if you're following a god for that kind of thing. I mean, if you're only playing a little bit at a time, maybe it's okay, but... Yeah, my general recommendation is to just never play it the first week it's out. Arguably not even the first month. I heard at some point they're going to do DLC for the game. I don't know if I want to wait that long before I play it. But I technically already have a copy since I'm a backer. Okay, these are the boxes I was talking about before chat. These are the ones I always forget are there, unless I like pop them manually. Alright, so I have three freeze traps for this room. I'm gonna do a little wiggle. It's fine. Buy enemies. I got one freeze trap. I think I'm gonna embrace death here. Oh, I got paralyzed. No. Leave me alone. Yo, maybe Jaya you. You will not like it. Ah, uh, somebody had to skip Brave Man. I was wondering how it died earlier. Makes sense. I don't think I need to go back for anything, so I'm just gonna take the normal warp. So we did exceed 190 XP a second. 
So you can see with like a ragtag crew, we're getting really good XP. Do I not get the money for the quest unless I pick up the scape doll? That is actually really annoying. Goodbye, scape doll. I'm putting it away. So I'll make another game and then I'll switch the song we're listening to. Dango offering to hop out for a new player. Let us know, chat, if you're waiting to join in, of course. Some people want to lurk, some people are watching during work and things like that. So I don't want to make any assumptions as to whether or not you want in. Put away our escape dolls. Let's advance it off a toy world stage one. Let's go to Jurassic Park stage. Okay, so it sounds like parameters there. Tiggy loving the song. I'll put it in the chat if people are curious about the song for later. Dino emo for Dino stage, that's fair. It is catchy. Is very close to leveling up again. At some point, I'll get rid of the adept. I don't really need it anymore. I'd ideally want to do, um, what is it? Heavenly Resist for certain runs. Otherwise, it's going to be replaced with V5 units. Depends on how badly I need to paralyze. Speaking of which, if I unequip this. 13. So if I get within two more ATA on level up, then I can sub it in for a Centurion technically. Did it help round out my evade and defense? We'll go a little further, then it'll free up a nice adept. I had that on my Rocket Seal for the longest time, because it fixes her accuracy and gives resistances, all of which is useful for falls. The 6 resist makes more of a difference than you would think. It's often the difference between me standing against Grants or not. And also having some dark resist is good too. Thank you, Urban Outdoorsman, for the good luck. <laughs> Tiggy crying for the repeated falling animation. There we go. Yeah, I like that the bonuses can be achieved with just three players. I'm not gonna lie, I, I do like the adjustments they made to RBR, where you get basically all the bonuses for three players. So that way there could be more games potentially, versus like it has to be a four man squad or it's not worth doing. Just a good feeling. Oh, hello, machine. buy everything near us. <laughs> See that? If I position my traps correctly, I can use my raw cast as a way to uh, detonate my traps on purpose. 
<laughs> so I've been standing on purpose between uh, the enemies and Marco, just so I can set the traps off faster. <laughs> so trolly. Using the range classes. There's only four targets in that room. It'll be fine. If it was Baran's launcher, I'd feel bad. Oh, they're so hosed. Hold on one second, chat. Sorry, chat. Family is asking me to do something. I'm going to be two minutes. I have to check something for them. Be right back. Sorry about that, chat. Let's switch the songs. Let's catch up to chat. Oh, chat's just waiting. Nice spots on draw.
Oh, my bad. Oh. I was gonna say, I feel only partially confident on which door to take there. I hate that the wrong doors have the green warps. That is definitely the worst feeling. Uh-oh. See an O from Marco. Oh! Nice. Congratulations. Potentially very useful since you're playing Ranger. Congrats on the Heaven Striker. See so yeah, a Photon Crystals, Discup Rayman, Heaven Striker. Those are the real rares that we're going for here. Getting other ones are potentially useful or mostly ignorable. Sad the Marissa jump right as I freeze, freeze trap there. I feel like that's not right. Yeah, it's not right. Gotta go towards the middle, I think. The problem is like when you get distracted with like phone call, you lose track of which how many rights and lefts you've taken. Oh well. So we'll do a couple more of these and then chat if you want to mix up the quests, let me know. If you have any personal requests for what you want to hunt, I do not mind switching it up. Just be aware we have a hard stop in about two hours. So I have some plans for the evening. Family had called related to that. They wanted to uh, me to check something. Oops, I should have taken the warp. Mm. There we go. I guess with the satellite lizards randomly being untargetable, it it does make me want to confuse trap them a little more. Destroy this Rappy. It's a simple. I was gonna say it's left after the warp. I think is how I remembered this. So you see, I left him at 100, so like one fireball will kill him. That's also why I don't like to Rafoe, because Rafoe will miss on them. They're probably like one of the only enemies. They're basically just Gafoe only. They're just too unpredictable with who they're targeting if they're gonna hop. Crazy. I call it the checkmate whenever they whenever they try to hop, but I go forward. They're gonna get hit anyway. There we go. Hopefully things are going well, Callum. Damn, I took that body dive. Oh, nice, nice. Team going first. Ooh, Tiggy's gonna do the work now.
Okay, so we'll go to Tiggy's Warp next. Not bad, only need a little bit more to level. I chose to stay at a distance there in particular. Two reasons. One, Marissa. Two, if I see a freeze trap there, I don't want to accidentally make them jump. So I'm not going to engage them in melee. Still got seven freezes left. I see I was in sync with the Marco that time. I think it's right. Like, my instinct is, say, is to say left, but, like, I think if I see the door like that, it's still a fake door. So I got six freeze traps left. I need three for the final room. So I can feel free to burn these here if I need them. And again, the confusion will make sure that the satellite lizards just kind of battle each other. Rip sand wrap these. Now, despite having a really long pause for me to go do something else, we're still at over 120 XP a second. I find kind of funny. I'm gonna hit the switch. I'm gonna telepipe. I'm gonna take Tiki's, who's green. Glad the weather is improving for you, though, Callum. Mow these enemies down. Change is indeed good. Hopefully it'll be good. Okay, I'm, lit I'm down to three freeze traps, so I'm gonna use confuse traps here. Or I can let Marco just freeze trap the rest. Whichever. This door is fortunate enough that I usually catch a glimpse if it's real or not. <laughs> so I don't usually have to guess on this door. I'm just gonna put a confuse trap down or something. Now we'll let Marco do whatever. I believe in Marco. I got three freezes left. Tons of confuse. And Marissa's just getting carved up by Girasol. Chop, chop, chop. Nice freeze trap. But yeah, I'm happy to use Confuse Trap a bit more. I feel like people were kind of sleeping on it. Like, I usually hear all these discussions of, like, you know, Freeze Trap OP, etc, etc. There's a lot of nuance to the Confuse Trap, especially when you're first starting out on how powerful it is. It does become less useful as you get stronger, but it is still a nice tool to have to take an enemy focus off of you. I'm gonna kill the Pyrogoron since they're immune to Tiki. My last free strap goes here. I saw a live and learn. I'm gonna pick that up. I feel like that's a song people like.
Nice level up. I love all the Slicer fanatics just pop out. Take that try grinder. I guess I'll wait a little bit for the Rappies, just to see what they have. Nothing. Actually, I should have taken a warp there. I need to put these music discs away. Or else I can't collect the quest anyway. Just kind of unfortunate. So I'm thinking one more and we'll do a check to see what the chat would like to play next. But at least we could say we did some uh, RBR. What are my counts at? 83 event eggs, 88 photon drops. So there's, I think, two Easter eggs I didn't put away last time. So it's a pretty solid run. Need a nap after this next run? No problem, Tiggy. So if somebody would like to take Tiggy's place after this run, by all means. I'm doing this most of the day, I'm just too tired. Yeah, get some rest, Tiggy. I might do some off-stream PSO in the evening. It really just depends on how long evening plans go, so I'm not gonna hard promise anything. But I'll stop by if I see anybody streaming it. Okay, let's swap the song. Goodbye, Ghost Area. Team Nap says Callum. Yeah, I think this quest is fortunately not, like, su super difficult to do either. A lot of the problem enemies, like Gurdabulu, Goron Detonator, are very low in number. So generally speaking, it's not too bad for people to clear. I think this is like one of the very specific RBR quests that I think really it's like just on the cusp of being good but it's just not quite and it pushes it over there's a few on RBR where even if they're there I'm like nah <laughs> nah it's all good well thank you for that Callum hopefully you get rest if you need it Be social and rest later. Nice, nice. Okay, chat hit the switch. I think this year is the most I have ever played Hunter in a year. I played them like a little bit. I'm like might put like 20 or 30 hours a year into them, but this event in particular has been very hunter focused. Actually, that's not the right weapon. A little freeze trap and run away from them to get the freeze. Again, I don't want to accidentally melee them and cause them to jump. So we're applicable. We'll throw the freeze trap out. Ooh, look at team deleting them. 
Just saying you have to do more. Oh, there's the ATA. Okay, we need one more ATA. Gonna swap that out up. And then I think I have enough ATP to do max materials without a big issue. Well, Diz, you're more than welcome to join us here. I feel like I made the wrong choice, yeah. I felt like I don't need that. I guess I could get that scape done for now. Drop it in case somebody actually wants it. No worries, Diz. We'll probably be taking a PSO break for a while. I might even take a stream break for a couple days next week. Since I'd like to go on like actual vacation versus PSO vacation. Rip satellite lizards. Lots of photon drops being found. It's always nice. A 50 hit striker. How pointless. On the plus side, I got all my traps reset. I just do whatever I want now. Ooh, Del Rappi, where are you at? Perish for the cause. Welcome back, Dango. Oh, that reminds me, Dango. Uh, I'm disoriented slightly. I don't think there's anything down there of interest. Let's go this way. I did get the voice clip for, uh, what's his name, Metello. Is there a specific quote you wanted from that? The Hollywood Ghost! It makes me so sad. I figured out how to clip past something I wasn't supposed to again. But I, I did it off stream, so chat won't believe me unless I do it on stream again. If it's not recorded, it doesn't count. Remember, chat, how I got confused seeing that weapon you have? What is it called? Uh, Last Swan or a Girasol? Last Swan's the pistol, Girasol's the twin blade. Oh man, it's gonna be suddenly very trials oriented. Rip my buffs. So anyway, I got the warp down there. Is that episode four only? Um, technically, I'm gonna go with the technically. I believe it's left. I did think about it. I'm like, did I warp? Yes, left. I think I acquired my first one in episode two, but it requires episode four badges. So that's where it's like a t technically yes. But it also drops from uh, zoos on like sky ID as an example. I think one other ID also gets uh, Girasol. It's not bad. There's better options for females in episode two with uh, Temple. Because it drops Vivian. And by you only play episode 1 and 2, do you mean you're playing classic or just refuse to do episode 4? So I think episode 4 is so much better than episode 2. I'm just curious about that. Episode 2 is horrendous. There's like a couple areas that are playable and then everything else is just like... Ugh. Some of those spawns. Like this is like a easy cakewalk compared to a lot of the later episode 2 stuff. Like, I would feel so sad bringing this team into tower, for example. I don't know how to get to episode 4, and episode 4 is chaotic. What do you mean? Are you... If you're playing on Affinia, you just select it. Are you playing on not Affinia? Or did you choose classic mode? If you chose classic mode, you can never do it.
Oh, you play on GameCube. Yeah, you're not able to. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure about the drops for GameCube. The normal to very hard, I think, are the same across Sifinia and uh, GameCube. With, like, one or two very minor exceptions. And then Ultimate is completely different. It's not even close. Um... Yeah, I find it funny these tables of words chaotic because I'm like, have you done Seabed onwards? I really, really just like those. Qu That's not the right way. I really, really just like those areas in particular. Yeah, exactly. Temple is just like, there's nothing worth hunting. I think that's the problem. It's like... Episode 2 drops are kind of just bad. I don't know what to say. Even with the Affinia rebalancing, I'm not really excited to do Temple or er, Episode 2 for the most part. It's pretty much Tower, maybe Seabed. That's it. We don't usually have a, hey everybody, let's do a Temple run. You might get it for Spaceship. If people don't have Daylight Scar, but honestly, that's about it. Alright, uh, warping time. Somebody warp. Other than me, because I put the telepipe down. There we go. I'll spin in circles. Yeah, episode 4 is really easy, to be honest with you. I think it's even easier than jungle in some regards. I probably put it about on par with jungle. I think there are some jungle quests that I think are just genuinely harder than episode 4. I think people just kind of over oversell satellite lizards. Every class can deal with them very easily. It just means you can't be pu like pure pew pew charge arm. That's basically it. Whereas like episode two, I feel like if you don't go in with like a full man team or a lot of freeze traps or a lot of frozen shooter, you just kind of die. Like your counterplay is you either instantly eliminate them or you get eliminated, unfortunately. For a lot of these enemies, confused trap will work, freeze trap works, paralysis is somewhat easy to do. Some small chances to EDK on lower difficulties. Gertabulus are kind of annoying, I guess, if you don't break demons. But I don't think they're anywhere near like an Epsilon or like a murder flower level of annoyance. Like, almost this entire time, I've been meleeing the anti-melee enemy, aka the Marissa. Like, it just... I'm just kind of there. Yeah, there's three types of the Miracles, and then there's the Del Lily. The Del Lily I don't care about, actually. It's the other murder flowers that are just absolutely horrendous. I just like those a lot. In multiplayer, the Miracle is weaker than it should be. It's weaker than the single player counterpart, I believe. And that's like the only one I have fun fighting because it dies instantly. Every other one, it's like, ooh, painful. How little damage you do is like a force and stuff. I think that's also the problem with episode two. I just feel like after a certain point, playing as a force and ultimate is just completely miserable. Whereas episode four, Forces are like god tier, number one. Number two, I feel like all classes have a chance to shine in it. As long as you bring a gun and a melee weapon for all characters, then it's fine.
put a little free strap action down. Easy kill. Yeah, I just... We talked about it at length, but there's a reason. I really just don't like the game design mechanics. It's very much like old J JRPG logic. And I will continue to re reiterate, I am so happy modern games generally do not do that because I absolutely do not miss that game design of like early, early 2000s, early 90s kind of games. Where they think the challenge is, oh, you know, like 40% of the time you die. Never been interested in that as a challenge. Okay, new song. Get some rest, Tiggy. So what would the team like to do? Melee, Foam Neural, and Episode 4. There you go. Welcome, young Chris. Sadly, you probably could do it. As long as you got Crimson Coat, Red Saber. It's probably doable. Let's add everyone one shot you die 60% of the time. That's a real challenge. Yeah, that, that feels like Episode 2. Episode 2 Tower is like, wait a minute. See, it's fair. There's like two enemies that don't one shot you, but everything else does. Isn't that fun? Don't you love that your levels don't matter? They're so good. So silly. I'd rather my stats matter, thank you. I know, even Blue Down is in disbelief. Okay, team. Do we do another one of these, or do we switch quests? Let's talk a little bit. I'm okay with doing more. I just need to know if that's what the chat wants. At some point, we'll do RTs for Dango. Stats matter, build DDK. Yeah, up until Murder Flowers, disregard that. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna slowly make a game. Let's do one more. And then we'll switch over to RTs for Dango. We'll do like three RTs. Or maybe two. RT is a pretty long quest. Maybe two RTs into a TTF. I think I have enough time for that. RTs are about an hour-ish. Like 50 minutes or so. No buffs challenge. Team's believing on this one. Well, welcome to Confuse Trap, your best friend for when you don't have buffs. I don't have S Red on me. Dango is the buff, that's true. He's got those humor muscles, he'll carry us right on his back. Standstill shield. I haven't used that very often. I remember trying it once. Yeah, some of the enemy resistances are very wacky worlds. I do feel like they. I do feel like Vieto 1 should have been a stronger unit, to be honest with you, to make forces a bit more competitive. Could you imagine if, like, one of those units granted, like, flat, I don't know, like, 10% 10, 10 to all elements, 20% to grants, non-stackable? Second is a good balance? Yeah, pretty much. 
Like, it would have to do more than that, because honestly, force damage is kind of whack. But it would have been nice if it was combined with, like, a Vieta one. Just get those free, beautiful stats. Thank you for shooting those. Yeah, I definitely know Sega's not good at balance. Oh, purple switch. I don't think I was close to the purple switch at any point. I'll pop the boxes while we wait. I was gonna say, I, I saw how they, they patched PSO2, so I know they're terrible at balance. It Some things never change. I'll read your comment in just a second. Wanna make sure I could buy these Marissas. The robots in episode 2 week to dark is great. Yeah, I feel like the beginning part of episode 2 is a forgiveness for putting Megan in the game. Because it is largely useless. Unfortunately. I would have been fine with B801 also giving a uh, flat 20% to uh, Mega chance of success, but then they slightly retooled enemy resistances to counteract that. So enemies that are 100 EDK now would be 150 or something. That would have been kind of nice to actually give a purpose for Mega. So you would potentially land it against, uh, what's it called? Del Beaters, for example. Enemies with like super high EDK. It'd be more realistic to do. Without really impacting the V502 curve that much, if at all. Would have been nice. I definitely feel at minimum. Things like piercing Migid. Migid should have pierced by default. And I feel like the phone roll should have just gotten a flat bonus for success as well. That would have been kind of sick, actually. Demonic Fork granting that bonus if you don't have it already, for example. It still really bothers me that there's like the, uh, what's it called? You have Crimson Coat buffing some of the red weapons, but not all the red weapons. So it's like you can buff Red Saber, but what about like Red Handgun and Red Partisan? Is there any reason they didn't go back and update it to affect those? It's not like they don't have really weird lists of items that they impact. We just look at like Proof of Swordsman's lore, or Sword Saint, I mean. But the weapons are just kind of crazy, wacky world stuff. Yeah, it would have been nice if they played around more with set bonuses, and obviously also informed the player that the set bonuses were there. Always thought that was ridiculous, where it's like... There's all these like really specific synergies. I love, for example, like Gracia boosts Yashminikovs, if I remember correctly. But then like, the hunters that can, that can wear it basically only are impacted by, like, one weapon on it. <laughs> like, it's just, like, it's so weird. It just... I'm like, they, but they, I'm like, but they can't use any of these. Oh, I think somebody else used the warp there. Okay. So I'm gonna telepipe here for whoever just warped. Yeah, Mika level 1 is so shamefully terrible. It's like really ridiculously expensive, it's slow, it barely works. Another really easy way they could have fixed Megid without the death percentage mattering. Could you imagine if it was like... If they wanted to remove insta-kill, if it did like demons or something instead? Could you imagine if you could have had a spell that did piercing demon? Like how useful that would have been and scaled? Like, if you just want to straight up remove the instant death, there's so many cooler things they could have done. And then, like, Demonic Fork would have improved it from, like, 
let, let's say it scales up to actually let's go this way for the rapies let's say it scales to like 50 percent or so by level 30 if like demonic fork adds a flat 25 percent or phone rule has it by default and there's so many like little things if you take it away from like the old school design it would have been like interesting to have that in your repertoire and depending on difficulty you'd use it or not use it and obviously bosses would need to be immune so it would have been cool yeah grant should have targeted everything that was possible that would have saved some hassle i think before if we want to introduce new mechanics whilst keeping pso theme I think it was Murphy that talked about last time that a uh, simple text would combo, the middle text would channel. So that way, if you kept holding it, they kept spamming it. And then the raw techniques charge. It would have been nice to be able to combo with things like Foey and Zond. That would have made them so much better. Instead, they're just, like, really helpful in early game, and then you basically never use them again. Outside of, like, balls. So poor phone who rolls, like, yeah, I cleared normal. And you go to, like, very hard mode, and you're like, oh boy, I don't do any more damage. So sad. Oh, Grants with Seas would have been nice. Or Confuse. Grants with Confuse would have been nice, actually. Seas would be more useful. Confuse would have been very funny and very trolly. Uh oh. Did. I. What? I was gonna say, did. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think Dango oops. Because I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, I'll put down another telepipe for the team. I'm glad I put a telepipe there, by the way. That would have been real bad. Use Dango's new one. He's about to do it. I'll be the safety for Dango. How's that? <laughs> if he's on me again. Yeah, that would have been fine too, honestly. Yeah, if they're not going to make it do damage, which I would have preferred, that would have been good. I do feel like a lot of attacks in this game should not have been set damage. Missiles should have been fire damage, laser should have been light. Just saying. Like, unless it's like a black beam, then you could argue it could be dark damage. To get more variety for why you would have EDK. Like, there's ways you could have made equipment more interesting that way. But instead, it's like really heavily slanted towards fire and maybe death. Most of the other elements don't matter. Uh, Gabarda should have been able to multi-hit. It should have not needed to focus a target. And it should have multi-hit. Which again, if you were doing it as like a channel, it would have been kind of nice. Like if it went pop bop bop and it gave you three chances of freeze i feel like people would use it yeah like i don't mind it being like not the fastest but it definitely needs to scale to remove some of that end lag at higher levels low levels i'm okay with it with where it is it is what it is like it is good damage freeze chance etc but when like rabarda gets to like 20 or so gabarda is just hilariously terrible by then So it being able to potentially multi-hit would have been kind of nice. I think a couple of the spells don't really make sense for what they are. Honestly, I feel like regular Zon should generally not have existed and it should have been Gizond. And then it would have been nice if Gizond was like a ring that followed you of lightning damage. So if you wanted to do like your melee force build, it was kind of like a brief fire and forget spell where it has like X number of charges that it hits. There's a lot of things they could have done to make it more interesting. You take mine. 
Poor Dangos. I slipped it behind Dango earlier. <laughs> yeah, like, Gabarda shouldn't be, like, a soup. It should do decent damage, but it should do more, like, the equivalency of damage over time. It's not going to do, like, that fast burst of Gabarda. But if you're allowed to, like, bop, 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 bop it kind of things, maybe it would do more. And again, it's not going to hit 360. It's weird that, like, regular Barda is about the same width of it. Same width as it. It needed to be kind of bigger as it levels. Yeah, so I think, like, it, the damage itself could be spread out and lower, but multiple freeze chances would have been real nice as, like, a pure lockdown. Yeah, exactly. Young Chris, the big thing is the auto lock. The auto lock is horrendous. You should have been able to just cast it, like, uh, Barda. Like, it literally should have behaved exactly like Barda. No angle up, no angle down, BS. Some queen in other than that. What do I think of Kafoe? It's fine. I think the fire spells are mostly balanced, except for regular Foey. If you could just combo regular Foey, then it would have cemented itself as, like, the boss killer. I also wish that if a... It, like, like, let's say you have a staff that casts Foey, too. I wish if you had a higher level, it used your higher level. Like, could you imagine if you if everybody was wearing like Hilda Bear canes because it allowed you to triple shot Foey? And then like Summit Moon would just let you potentially do that as well. But for all simple techs. So you don't need to have like a million ult weapons. Oh no, there's just so many more interesting things they could have done with it, sadly, and they didn't. Clear speed is fine for no buffs. Just shows you that it's not as hard of an episode as people might think. <laughs> we have oops all hunters and traps. One ranger, I think. Nice, like the box check, thank you. I'm gonna start spamming my freeze traps here. I saved up more than usual because I have a feeling I'll need three to four in this next room. So I got six left, so I think I'm mostly good. What's funny is you can actually snipe them before you enter the room. And you can actually pick them off in a reasonable pace. Let me do something like this by the team sometime. Yeah, this buys the team a lot of time to debuff, focus enemies. I'm gonna throw one more out. I still have two for the final room if I need it. Yeah, like obviously with the force with buffs, things are gonna go faster, but even at this rate, it's still better than most quests that you could do. 140 XP is pretty high. You can see here, like, the use of the freeze trap just shutting down the wave. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> I want to hit the cancels Kapoe and Mechan animation lag. <clears throat> Mech Gun's already pretty powerful. I don't know if we need Mech Gun buffs. Kapoe's also pretty good, honestly. I just think like V101, sh or excuse me, not V101, V801 should have been a little better. Like it does speed it up, but like, man. It's it's just not comparable to like a V101. Welcome retired gamer, thank you for the follow. 
Is it true if you get to 200, you get a trap that one-shots a boss? No. I don't know what you've been reading. You can never use traps on bosses. We call those the, the old wives' tales. It's pushing the truck in Pokemon all over again. away. I got a hilarious amount of most setup for Hunter. So we've been going money positive for so long that I'm actually up like 200k on a Hunter. Because I haven't needed Jaya while playing with the group. Oh, I'm bringing in Yellow ID. I'm going to level my raw cast. I will deploy the raw cast. The optimal choice for RT. So yeah, that feels pretty good. I think some weapons that are combo locked honestly shouldn't have been combo locked. Like some of them I kind of understand if they're more like a super lopsided weapon, but there's several weapons that just have no business being combo locked. It's kind of insulting that they're like that. Most of the bazooka type weapons should have been hard buffed. Like Cannon Rouge is the only good one in the whole list. Even things like Phonon Phaser should have been way higher in ATP. That weapon is so fun to use when you're like pre-ultimate and it's just so bad in ultimate. It's such a shame. Anyway, let's switch the song. Tankus has arrived. He's here to carry. Yeah, there's just like really dead weapon types and a combo. Some of it is like some of the problem with balancing his specials. It would have been nice if the elemental weapons scaled off the MST to some extent, even a small amount. The problem too is this enemy resistances are so high. Like technically elemental weapons might not even need to be touched because I think they're actually okay at low difficulties. It's just more like by the time you get to ultimate, especially multiplayer, when like an enemy weakness is like 60 to 70, you're just not doing any damage. So it's like, is that 100 to two, maybe 120 damage of fire shot gonna be better than it like a 12, 18, 1200 ATP anything? No. Even before Zalora or Shifta. So some of it is also just retooling things. Please nerf Chaos Bringer Ice Resistance in multiplayer. What is that absolute nonsense? I'm gonna bring it up again. I will soapbox this forever. Let's talk about that thing's ice resistance and why that thing ruins multiplayer for sorcerers. Where is it at? Uh, I went the Affinia one. One second. In single player, I think it's perfectly balanced. Multiplayer, though, is stupid. So let's see. In one person, sure thing, get some water. In, one, in single player mode, 30 ice resist. Multiplayer, 90. It's at 90. Your your best damaging spell is 90 resist? The thing is so miserable to fight as a forest. What were they thinking? Do you use it for my low level runs as cast when I can't do damage when low on demons? Yeah, exactly. Like I do think the elemental weapons are like fine for lower difficulties. They just they just don't do anything after a certain difficulty. I don't know if it's like very hard specifically, but definitely ne by ultimate, you are never using it unless you're setting up some crazy glitch. Like, just think about that chat. Imagine if you're told like, oh, you will only do 10% of your total damage and that's what you're expected to do. 
Also, I do find find it funny its weakness is fire in the lower difficulties. Which also makes it confusing as a force when everything has different resistances. Worst part is ice doesn't do elemental damage. Hmm. Yeah, I do think if you have the, uh... Not Club of Laconium. It's not Sumerin. Ah, whatever, you know what I mean. The 40% Ice Barter Staff, whatever that one's called. Not Ice Staff of Dagon, but the more specific one. You can, like, three-shot it as a faux rule with Barta. If you are, like, fully specced out. And that is, like, the funniest thing ever to three-shot those. So, like, I Barta does do decent damage. It's just... In multiplayer, they just decided forces shouldn't have fun. And I think that's where it's really awkward, because things like Heaven Striker get to abuse light resistance weakness more than the force can. And I'm like, I feel like the force should just be inherently better at elemental damage. Why are they so bad at that? Just very confusing to me. He's gonna come around the corner for me. I'm gonna make sure I do the box check here because yellow boxes are stupid. Oh, no rares this time. See, so yeah, I think ice does decent damage as long as it's Barda. And it's weird because Barda is probably the most usable simple tech just because of the fact that it pierces. And even in low difficulties, you'll end up using Barda to hit chip multiple people. So it's still usable at like all levels of play. Oops, already dead. Oh, there's the spirit flow and sword. Guess I'll pick that up. Maybe to balance out tech's almost never missing. Yeah. I do feel like forces just scale super poorly, which is really weird because you have like all these like really good, like if you just had an item that said do 40% more damage as like a melee, you're like excited. You get it on like a force, you're like, oh, I guess I'll do okay damage now. <laughs> just the, the level of resistances makes it so depressing. I do feel like what they should have done, they they need to completely fix force weapons. I, I think that would probably be one of the biggest changes in the game. Ignore me shooting into the wall. Like the fact that wands don't add a lot of MST and they generally slow your animations down is insane. Like it's just, it is actually insane and that makes no sense. They should have all inherently had a small bonus if they didn't want to go pure MST routes. But let's say just holding a wand or a rod gives 5% extra damage for spells. I'm not sure if- I guess they could technically keep the bare hand casting. But like genuinely there's no reason to holding the wand other than to learn abilities briefly. Unless you're a female. Can you imagine in 2 if uh, weapon attributes actually mattered for spells? Take all those horrible junk items that you're looking for hit and they would actually be potentially useful on the force. Could you imagine? You're like, hold on guys. I got my 90 machine uh, magical piece, so I'm going to be doing 90% more potential like base weapon damage towards uh, Sinnohs and stuff. Like, obviously, it can't apply to all of your MST. That would be unfair. And that's why I think some of those weapons should have just had it. So, like, Endgame 1 should have been giving, like, 300, 400 MST to compensate. Like, they don't have to scale, like, super hard. But, like, the fact that, like, a... One of the best possible equipped wands only gives, like, 50 MST and it doesn't go above your cap? Like, holy, what were they thinking? 
Yeah, like, can you imagine how much more fun that would have been? Because they do fix that to some extent. If you look at what they did for uh, PS or Fantasy Star Zero, that's kind of what they did. Where they made sure that wands actually did damage based off your MST and they increased MST. So you had like a reasonable damage option. So like they did think about that at some point. They knew it was a problem. Got the paralysis one again, GG. Into the corner I go. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd like Fantasy Star Zero's get a special attack on the weapon thing because eventually I just felt like in that game, I literally only did the special attacks and did not bother with most of my other techniques. So it just came down to, do you want to like magic sign or magic rodeo or whatever it's called or whatever both of those are called and then that was your character for like 90% of the game I don't want it to go to like that extreme but yeah they definitely botched it I think one thing that also would have been like a huge lifesaver and I have no idea why they didn't do that in regular PSO how come they didn't decide to lower fire, ice, thunder and light resist if you Zalora a target wouldn't that have made so much more sense, chat? You'd actually inspire the forces to debuff. <laughs> like an all-force party. My plus five MSC bonus is OP, I only did one point of extra damage, yeah. very silly so yeah I think they tried to fix some of those issues in the Fantasy Star Zero while adding like a little more complexity to the combat so at some point I would like to play it on stream assuming chat votes for it at some point otherwise I think the next offshoot of PSO that we're gonna do is probably episode 3 probably closer to May at this rate also I should probably courtesy freeze trap So yeah, there's definitely some really weird decisions that I'm surprised, like, it's one thing if, you know, if it's like that in Dreamcast and GameCube, but like by the time it came to like PC, to just have never have touched it is kind of funny to me. I loved using the bazooka there to freeze. It's so unnecessary. I just don't feel like swapping for the boss. I guess I could also courtesy frozen shooter the Barans. Okay, this time I'm gonna remember, I must shoot the back wall. Courtesy. <laughs> Advance the song by one. Oh my gosh, I actually got invincibility again. I just assumed I was going to be playing the waiting game. I'm going to back up slightly so I get a better angle. Gotcha. PS0 doesn't utilize the touchscreen for tech, so game compensates by messing with the balance. I think some things in PS0 are better balanced. I'm not sure I agree with all the weapon changes, but... I think we all know deep down, Ramar needed that hard nerf. 
stats don't make any sense. They balance out mags a little more, but in some ways they're a bit less interesting. I don't remember ever really caring about mags while playing the first Fantasy Star Zero. I had like a handful of characters, I took them to max difficulty, but it wasn't like I ever hit max level. I did like the little achievements as you played. But then like after I cleared them, I'm like, oh. Plus see if us are weak due to it, so mostly relying on pure base stats, yeah. Enjoying Wonder Park from Bomberman. Dinette, I think. Check the name of the game again. One day it will target you. Excuse me, net to Bomberman. Yeah, I'm not, I can't say about the balance for everything else. It's been a very long time since I played. I thought about if I wanted to do a glitch run of that. I thought about it. Or if chat wants me to play legit. <laughs> You'd be like, how come you're doing that with the gun blade? And I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> gun blade's ultimate attack speed buff as fast as your finger can tap. That's a lot of Mahu. Yeah, I did like that when I was playing that game a lot because obviously there's not a lot of multiplayer support unless you play it on like an emulation. But I remember enjoying the fact that you could get like a four man party, even if they were super dumb. I just like that you could just get a build your own party. I'm like, ah, oh, yes. Oh, I should take the Hell Cleave check. I never hit this thing correctly. There we go. No weapons of interest, sadly. Hmm. Oh, I did actually hit him. <laughs> I did not have faith there. I thought I just, I thought I hit the wall. I'm like, look at me, I'm helping. been too sharp of a turn. I'll correct it when I see the boss. <clears throat> but anyway, it's bazooka time. Yeah, I do miss, especially compared to Affinia, how easy it was to do the quick menuing in GameCube version compared to the Game Boy. Nice, got a solid hit. Ooh, no debuffs on the boss though. That sucks. Oh, I'm actually not being targeted? Wow, I get to actually aim at the boss? Damn. That was all bazooka chat. 
Ra Ranger doesn't play the same game that other people do in PSO. <laughs> Like, what a ridiculous character. Oh, no Galatine. Sad. No weapons of interest. Those are armor, I think. Yeah. There's the other weapon box. Thank you. I knew there were two. I just forgot where the other one was. I'll take it in the face for the team. Did I miss that by two damage? That is so sad. Where's my combo kill? hell on me, so I'm gonna believe in you, chat. Clear the way for chat so they could get in the room. Eventually need to pop those boxes. I guess I could kill these for more XP and maybe items. Get rid of these. Yeah, so definitely check the Discord later. I'll let you know probably closer to... Ooh... Probably 10, whether or not I'm going to do a bonus stream. Because I think that would be the earliest I would potentially get out. Because I'm going to go for dinner and then uh, play afterwards. But it is going to be a drive for me. That's why I got to leave at basically 5... Rid of Rico boxes. Team's got the other one. Nice. I'm gonna get hit there. Not anything I could do. I'm, I was in the Vulcan animation. GG. Take this invincibility though. On the plus side, I mag blast. Dare you to charge me? See, normally I would need Twin Blaze to slow it down to get a good shot on Frozen Shooter. But, uh... Yeah, when you have Mag Invincibility, you just don't care. I'll let the team deal with those. Onwards we go. We'll switch the song while we wait for the team. Which class design do I hate the most? You mean like in appearance or like mechanically? I'm still really mad that they messed up the Faux Marl and the Hugh Casile. Both of those classes don't make any sense to me. Faux Neural, her only real problem is strength. Should have been way higher. It didn't need to be like 800, but given how focused ATP it was, it should have been much higher than what it was. Also, I don't understand why she has less MST than Bo Newman at low levels. Why does she have less MST than him? That's like her only benefit. Um, I don't really like the Fo Newman appearance wise. I guess he's the only character I don't really care about. I prefer slightly different designs for Rockass, I guess. But generally speaking, there's like a design I like. I feel like when I play... Oh, team could go back for the Morphos if you want. Whatever, I'm going through. I feel like no matter what, I have to wear clown shoes. 
with faux newman and where like at least the faux newrels outfits i kind of like there's like maybe two faux newman outfits total that i tolerate <laughs> most of them are kind of bad so his combination of hat and everything else is like not me when it comes to characters It's like, I don't care if he has those options, it's just like, why is every option that? So yeah, more often than not, I don't usually like hats on characters. So the fact that he has a hat on like nearly every head, I find really annoying. That's so like, I would have much rather had uh, other options there. Oh, you thought I didn't know where you were, Sinozoa? Nice try. Barely even let the monster reader proc before I shot you. Yeah, I I'm not a fan of hats in, in real life, so you will generally not see me put helmets on characters either. So the fact that I'm ha that I have to wear it, I think by default makes it that I don't like that character. I don't mind like headbands or stuff like that. But it's like, I don't really want to cover the hair. I feel like that's kind of a distinguishing feature of the character most of the time. I'll say twins for later. So now we know with Heaven Striker, we could get three Heaven Striker shots and then switch to Charge Vulcan to maximize our damage. Which is kind of important. Yeah, we're all gonna use PB, so I'm using twins. So I'm just gonna say twins, people will announce what they're doing. Peel is being used. Figure it out. <laughs> I'm gonna say using twins, and that'll let you know that I'm ready to go. No, somebody delayed used it. That's so sad. Rip. Well, here comes challenge mode. It's gonna be interesting. What level is it? Oh, 45. Yikes. That's really not good. I don't know if I don't know if somebody doubled up on Pila. Because if they it couldn't have been twins. I think two people did it, and then two people donated on top of that. But I didn't see Marco get anything, so he might have doubled up, or he donated. I'm not sure which happened. Because my otherwise my reader would denote that you would have had the buff. Chad, you are so lucky. I optimized my Heaven Striker damage there. You have no idea. <laughs> you sh you should th you should thank me for doing that. I did over two thousand damage to that boss. We would not have killed it just then had I not done that. That damage was actually one hundred percent needed to kill that, or else we would have been lasered super badly. Well, anyway, it's now up to you, Chat. Just make sure to debuff the boss and then nuke it, and we should be good. It's so sad that Humar can't debuff this boss on the first phase, because the boss is too far away. That was probably the saddest fact we've seen. No! Somebody shot too early! No! No! Alright, so for future reference, I'll repeat it again, because I, I forgot to repeat it this time. Do not shoot the boss, unless the boss looks around first. So somebody shot it like a second before that happened. So I, I didn't think that was gonna happen. Fortunately, I saw a buff. So, <laughs> the reason you don't do that is because if you shoot early, the boss punishes you with that and that'll kill a lot of players. I fortunately had HP though. Also been thinking Hunu Roll should have been all right. Oh, Hunu Roll is probably the worst mechanically. She is one of the most trash characters in the game and you cannot tell me otherwise. They, they messed her up start to finish. I'm so mad at Hunu Rule. I'm not mad at whatever happened on screen. I'm mad at Hunu Rule. 
for all the Hugh New World level lovers out there, I'm so sorry you had to play that character from like 1 to 150 before your character becomes real. There is no excuse for that. GG though. The fact that her ATA is lower than Hugh cast for like a majority of 1 to 80 is insane to me. She has none of the stats to back it up. Horrible stat growth. Mediocre ATP. MST is not good enough. Just terrible. She's just so bad at leveling. And the reward is, I guess, okay. But like, is it going to be better? Is it going to be better than like any of the casts? Or even a decent force? Hell no. She's bad. <laughs> She's so bad. High levels. She finally becomes a real character, but that that is a long time to wait for you to finally enjoy the character. I know for me, every time I had to play that character, I was like, listen, I'm gonna, if I don't have double adept, blue Adoshi, violet Nibidau, I'm not playing this character. She is so unit hungry just to be like functional. It's insane. I don't even mean like overpowered, like just literally functional. You need so many units. She's so bad. She really is though. Go look up go look up any tier lists. I guarantee you all the speedrunners put her in F. She's one of the worst. The struggle is real. <laughs> they messed her up so bad. I don't know what they were thinking. Bad, bad choices with that character. What you need are cookies. Maybe with her. She is so terrible. I think the only character I enjoyed less leveling was... <sighs> Honestly, I don't think there was. I take that back. Yukaseal was a little rough at first, but daggers are fine. Hugh I was fine with. Rock cast I was fine with. Rock is seal a little bit? There's F tier and then she's in trash tier. She's bad. She's definitely the worst leveling character in the game. Period. She's so bad. Oh no, the baker is returned. Yeah, pretty much. She is like actually so bad. And again, that's PSO's fault. They could have given her good stat growths and she would have been fine. But no, they, they dumped all over her. Be mad on behalf of everybody that plays that character that had to sit through her level ups. Kudural is very easy to level. Is it called getting carried in cookies? Because <laughs> she's she is not landing hits and she is not doing damage with force techniques. She is so bad at leveling. Cookie carry is real. Yeah, I, I feel like that's where it was going. <laughs> I was like, if you could get to like 140 ish, then they think she's okay. But yeah, just remember. I just kind of sat there and I was like, hmm. Are these buffs worth it if I hit more less often than like the Humar? Like I don't know. So we'll do one more RT. Then after that, if I guess if Prometheus is offering cookies or something, I'll go see what he wants with them. Oh, Ramaral, much better choice for this quest. That's not a huge roll disc, it's just Ranger broken. Anybody with a bazooka in this quest is like top tier. <laughs> just, can you bazooka? Yes, no. <laughs> Dark Flow is okay on a couple bosses, but honestly. Like, Dark Flow, I think, is about the same on Worm Boss, sort of. As long as you have a good disca. But man, against everything else, it's bazooka time. Although I will say, I guess Hunter has a small advantage on uh, Okaflow both phases. So I guess it's really how you make it. But man, having two rangers for this quest, oh, so good. Do Cleo at a reasonable level with Ramarl, that's also true. Thank you for subscribing, Cryo. Hopefully you're doing well. We're going to be putting a game vote in probably at the beginning of next month. I will put Chrono Trigger on the list for people that want to see me play Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. So that is your chance to vote for that game.
Got a team with my smoker and a 12 pack. Interesting. Oh, speaking of which, forgot to change the song. So we're done with the Bomberman songs for now. Let's go to Bomberman Live. Let's check to make sure the crates are popped. Crates were not popped. No ad slots though, sadly. Does that include Radical Dreamers too? You mentioned it before. It depends on what kind of game it is. I would have to see what kind of game it is. If it's like a mobile or browser game, which I don't remember, the answer is probably no. It's a text-based game. Mm. I'm leaning no towards it then already. I wouldn't mind doing the first two though. I mean, we do mostly text-based games. We do Phoenix Raid on Saturdays. I just don't think I'm that into the lore of the game. To fully enjoy something like that. Find yourself in Yon Dungeon, you see you flax. Oh no. I know that's a reference to something, but I forget what. So, like, we do do them. If it's, like, a solid standalone game, I don't mind. It'll be, like, a, a single session kind of thing, just to poke around at it. But, yeah. Expect no game experience in either category. You might as well just treat both as a blind run. It has been way too long since I played. I know, like, the general plot beats, and that's vaguely it. Oh no, you're trying to get me to play the rando. I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to memorize the boss AI for that kind of thing. I feel like I would do super horrible at it. If you don't backseat, I probably wouldn't even complete the run. I barely know where to go in the normal game. Yeah, I think that just requires too much knowledge, honestly. For me, it feels a bit too daunting to go into, especially since I haven't even played the game in like more than 20 years. It's like, I remember who was very strong when I played and that was about it. So I, I have like safety strats, but that's about it. But otherwise, it's like, what are boss weaknesses? Which, what, what levels should you be at? What, what levels do you get techs? No idea. What enemies are good for getting ability points? No idea. We're gonna aim at the corner here. So if we line it up properly, we could stop the paralysis thing from ever hitting the humans, but we gotta shoot fast, sadly. So now we're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing to try to help the human players. There we go. And that's all we could do is the cast. Then I can sometimes power shoot here. Oh, I, do, I got it there. Then it'll pop up around here. Oh, slightly too early. Oh, it's kind of late. What happened? Hello? Well, that was weird. I've never seen a delay that long before. I realized that was so randomized. Goodbye, boss. Oh, Barbara. Not feeling good for the lineup Olympics. We're gonna try again. Yeah, I don't think I'll do really good in the turn base randomizers, to be honest with you. Unless it was like Mystic Quest, it would have to be something real simple. 
where it's more like a smaller pool of items. I just don't think I would ever run it to the extent I would feel comfortable with it. I if that is one of the ones where you raise your own monsters, hell no. I don't I don't want to play those. <laughs> I played a Digimon World game. I don't know what number it was. I remember it wanted me to train things up, and I'm like, oh, I swear, if this is like Monster Rancher, I'm gonna get very sad at some point and then stop playing. Yeah, like, I like the Mystic Quest Rando. I, the only th the only hard part for me for Mystic Quest Rando is mostly just remembering where, what glyphs the warps needed. Like, that would be something where it's just kind of like a hard knowledge check. Like, I know they're in the towns, but what are they offhand? So that would be like one of the few points that would stop me from running it more often if I wanted to save time. But it, it's something I would more easily be able to judge because the, the enemies are much more linear in strategy. Monster Rancher is fun though. Nah, no thanks. Listen, Chad, if I if I invest like 12 or 15 hours in a monster and it dies, I'm out. I <laughs> just not nah, I'm not I don't enjoy that. Don't you take away the thing I was working on. No, thank you. It's not even sentimentality reasons. I just don't want to restart another monster. Like it's it's, it's that simple. I, I chose this. I want this period. No more. Dragon Slayer. Been playing with long guest levels and, and with extended spellbooks and randomizer world. Interesting. Freeze the poor brands there. I thought it was kind of interesting. Let's move to the next song. You yeah, poor Tristan. Hmm. He's like, I'm a ninja, and I'm like, just give me Phoebe. Oh, we did bonus damage on the face? That's nice. Let's walk backwards, get tagged, whatever. See me play a first person shooter? Why? I'm okay with them. I'm like the definition of an average player. My reflexes are slow because I'm older. I would do a lot of terrain abuse stuff if I were to play now. That'd be about it. I used to play Time Splitters a lot, for example. I prefer that over Halo. older than you maybe I'm just saying for FPS I'm not exactly in the age range for them yeah you're slightly older not by much though oh see that's the thing I'm not good with snipers either so it's like, if you think I'm like the patient sniper to make up for that, I'm absolutely not. I think my loadout in most games was double pistol, rocket launcher. I played with almost nothing else. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't quick scope or anything. I don't even use weapons with scopes, <laughs> be real with you. I'm like, listen, I just eyeball it and shoot and get the headshots. All good. I'm good at mashing the fire button for uh, rapid fires. I always thought it was funny when I played things like Saints Row and things of that nature, and I just always did more damage with pistol than submachine gun or even assault rifle. Those bullets are deadly accurate in some of those games. Makes no sense. Yeah, I, I, I didn't touch Halo as much. I just didn't get into it. It's not my thing, mostly. I definitely don't want to get into competitive games anymore. So that usually rules out first-person shooters. If I do play like a first-person shooter like Borderlands, I break the game completely. Duping weapons, cheating stats, going places I shouldn't, going out of bounds. <laughs> Modifying the game file. Get out here, Cinna Barrel. Yeah, the last one I played was Halo 2. I don't I don't think I played 3 or anything after that. Rip to that 40 hit bind arm though. Roblox FPS? I'm assuming that's a real thing. I might have turned too much. No, I'm not a I'm not an FPS player anymore. I'm especially bad on PC shooters. I grew up on console, so trying to aim with mouse and keyboard, I'm super bad at. I'm below average, for sure, when it comes to PC. Console, though, no problems. Please don't hit me. Rip me. I hate that so much about high HP chat. Every time. People complain it's not a problem. They're like, okay. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I shake my head every time. I don't have a good angle to the boss. Let me do this. That'll kill. Uh, I used to play League of Legends a long time ago. I didn't really enjoy playing it. I played it for the sake of playing with other people, but I myself did not enjoy the game. It is just way too toxic. Another big reason I don't ever really want to go back to competitive games. I kind of had enough of that. That era is over for me. Trust me when I say this, you practice, you can get on a PC FPS. I don't think you understand how bad I am with PC. It has not changed in like 10 years. It's not going to change at this point. The way I'm used to playing with the controller, it just it's purely how I want to react. I can't untrain that while still playing on console. That's like the whole mentality of like some of the shortcuts, not being able to do them on controller makes me sad. Say it's not over for me? No, thank you. I'm so dead. 
They hit me out of the trimate usage. Oh, that was so rude. He gave me bag blast by exactly what I needed as I trimated. That sucks so bad. Oh, I went to trimate. This is why you don't use control. I got distracted by chat. I'm not gonna lie. Rip. I could get enough to donate later. I'm so sad. I just wanted to like really quickly press it and it just exactly gave me enough. That sucked. Because in my defense, it, it was showing that it was not the mag blast when I pressed it, but because it took a little bit to activate, it did that. Yeah. Sucks so much. Yeah, no thank you to FPS. Not my forte. It's like I'm a little better at that than platformers, but that's not really a, a big leap. I'm really bad at platformers. Platformers I have no hope on. There's no way you could train me at this point to be decent at them. I've not been good at it my entire life. It has not changed across many consoles. It has not changed across many games. It's just not my mentality or being able to judge that kind of distance. You know what? I didn't get the quick shoot on it, but the timing still kind of worked there. I'll take that. Yeah, it's just like my hands don't really want to learn it. Like if I learn a game the first way, like playing League of Legends, there's nothing that my hand will confuse it with. But like first person shooter, no. I'm going to be thinking of way too many controller inputs. I did try to get a gaming mouse to alleviate that so I could do some of the inputs I'm used to doing with my right hand, whether it's firing like grenade or alternate things like uh, potentially zoom. All of those are, you know, still right hand things. And some of them you can map with the de default one, but it just gets kind of annoying sometimes, especially if I'm used to playing with the face buttons. So like I have a gaming mouse that does like one to six, so I can emulate the uh, face buttons if I want to. You play auto chess? See, I quit before auto chess was a thing. I'm not even sure what that is, to be honest with you. I don't think I've played it since like 2018. It was before they did their big riot count move. Might have been 2017. I know they were looking into new features when I was looking to quit but I can firm firmly say that I've never played auto chess. Let's play like an Xbox controller to PC. Yeah, the downside though, oh, I got excited for a second. The downside though is that there's a lot of like console friendly things that aren't on PC when you do that. So for me, I, I would rather learn or prefer to learn with the mouse anyway at that point, because there's much more uh, auto aim on the consoles. So I'm just used to how that play style is to let it just like do very minute adjustments. Get rid of you. Wait, what? <laughs> was it frozen or something? It wasn't targetable, but it was still alive. That was interesting. Yeah, I don't think I would ever want to do keyboard PSO. I'm going to go with no thank you on that one. <laughs> I think the big problem with like those kind of games in particular is like I'm used to moving with my left hand thumb and maybe at most my index finger. So anything that relies on me like doing like, if I put my left hand on, like, the arrow keys, 
I don't have that smoothness of motion to do a lot of those kinds of inputs. So like I could not do a fighting game, for example, in keyboard. I'm too used to how it would feel if you do it with either literally a console stick or whatever. Actually, I'm not quite a 30. Let me get meter. Yeah, I'm going to have to donate. I'm not far off meter wise, at least. Yeah, somebody else will have to twins. Ah, I got enough now. Everybody has to come in the room. Don't don't do it from there. You're going to scare me. There we go. <laughs> there we should be good now. There we go. Yeah, I just look for the symbol. Yeah, like my left hand is not going to be able like there are some things I could do very easily with my right hand. Like if I'm playing on like a arcade stick, I can do what's referred to as like pianoing really easily where I'm kind of drumming from either left to right or right to left. Like you would do that potentially for extra inputs for like light, medium, heavy, or potentially doing plinking if you're playing Street Fighter 4. Like my right hand knows how to do that. My left hand cannot do that. So needing to do that on a keyboard where it's very left hand focused, it's not happening. My finger dexterity is not matched to the experience of my right hand at all. One, two, three. I actually landed two shots. That's huge. So that did almost 4,000 damage that time. It's pretty good. So I like that little Heaven Striker optimization. I was going to say, I'm going to hope the team waits for it this time. Or we're going to be very sad. Otherwise, I'm going to have to panic heal so I don't die. But with 65 shifted, it shouldn't be too bad. See, I have maybe enough time to TTF after this, and that's it. I gotta go, like, immediately afterwards. Perish. Switch the song we're listening to. <laughs> Quite a song for Olga Flo's death, I guess. Everybody's cheering Dango on for the Parasite Gene Flow. Like, you got this, Dango. We believe in you. See you around, Cryo. So close to hitting 180. So by the Friday event, I almost hit 180 with this character. That's pretty impressive. I'll take that. Uh, What ID do I feel like playing as? Parasite Gene Monomate. Oof. Congrats to Lance for me get level 30. So yeah, I'm like a quest away from using Red Wing. Sadly, if I could have played longer, I would have. But I think that's phenomenal. My goal was only to hit 179 with one character. Instead, one character hit 180 and another was half a quest from 180. So probably next time we play, we'll put Red Ring on this character. Dango's looking to find one on his own, I think first. Let's go ahead and make a game. Guess I could just bring in Hyuka Seal. I do enjoy using her now that she has Red Ring even more. So far, she's my favorite hunter, but I have a feeling once Hugh casts hits max ATP, my opinion will change. But for now, her high accuracy plus red ring equals happy times. So I think almost all the characters in my first character bank had very little power leveling, if any. They're pretty much like the OG. I got them 1 to 80 mostly in solo games. 
I didn't play with them until they were like 110 or 120 in multiplayer. This character has been through a lot of it. So this will be the final run of the day. Unless we do a bonus stream later. So we'll wait for a fourth person. I'll switch the song. Bridges, Bears, and Water Fairs. Oh, I don't see any takers. So if you want to rejoin Marco. Welcome, Supersonica. Quite the community I have. I guess that's a compliment. Thank you. Hopefully you're doing well, Supersonica. <laughs> when I say find it, do count party members and set round like this is just a good one. Yeah, I every single time I'm doing it, I'm like, I'll just give it to Dango if Dango's in there. I don't really care. I have one in my own bag, so I don't technically like need need them. I'm more looking to see if I want a high hit caliber versus other things. So for me, I'm not in a rush. Until my Q cast gets like basically red ring, I don't think I care. <laughs> Otherwise, I have the hard part out of the way. Ooh, I need to lose a little more HP. That should be good enough. Oh, I don't have my uh, dark glow. We're going back immediately. I believe it's in the share bank. Give me a second shot. That's actually important that I have that. Okay. <laughs> Very quickly correcting that mistake. There we go. Not too much time loss. Oh, I didn't see the warp. Rip. Okay, let's continue. Nice invincibility. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping just for a random Galatine on the yellow ID. So I'll keep doing yellow ID runs for the off chance of Galatine, and then we'll do uh, yellow ID force, I think, in the future when it's not the event. Just for more Daylight Scar Galatine attempts. So technically, we did get a Daylight Scar the other day. So the yellow force did pay off already. That was nice. Let's try to get the timing. Ooh, there we go. I think I got it. See how injured the enemy looks? Goodbye. We damaged it in phase two. Stay near here in case it's like a material. Yeah, nothing of interest. Uh, we're gonna switch to the song and then we're gonna go for slime duping. A little more appropriate. Come to me, slime. Say GG to the slime. It has now been outplayed. That's why we purposely regen health in case that happens. That's within expected parameters. Now to regen a little safety HP. Vent egg, nice. Slime duping is so good. Lots has found heaven punisher? Wow. 
Heaven, Punisher, and Megid within five minutes of each other. That is something. Anyway, Hellpipe tel should be up. Lots having lots of fun, something like that. Uh, I guess I'll charge Disco. I don't think my HP really matters. It's a way for people to use the telephone. Oh, people walked here. Rip. Maybe they were collecting a event. No, it couldn't be event eggs. Maybe just materials or something. Unfortunate. Okay, I'm at full health, but I'm at invincibility. I'll take that 30,000 miss that I lost. That was worth it. I have so much money anyway. Can't believe I went up 200,000 doing other quests. Guess this is the power of episode 4. No, they're still horrendous. A lot of the original drops are un untouched. So you'll see a lot of like normal to very hard absolute BS drop rates. Ooh, I should have stayed behind. I could have gotten two guild chicks killed. That's unfortunate. So yeah, they're pretty rare. the rest of the party. I'm getting a little worried. We have to be grouped up for the Barans, unless you guys are telepiping past it. Which is fine if you are. Don't get me wrong. I'll put down the telepipe for you. That freeze trap is so beautiful. I never have to shoot it. I time it so that by the time it lands and maybe thinks about attacking, it's good. Ooh, team's a little far in front of me here. That's not good. Uh, I think I'm going to be forced to fight the Barans here. So I think I'm going to have to kill them here. Rewarded again for the unnecessary kill. Beautiful. So I did slime duping to try to get rare slime for Lava's Cannon. Got Event Egg. Killed Barans because it was in my way. Get rewarded. Okay, I'm going to be spamming Twin Blaze. Have fun whoever's actually damaging it. Okay. Parameters while it's hearing the spread needle. That's fair. So I'm going to try my best to slow it down. Yeah, fortunately, Twin Blade barely damages the monitor at all. So it's pretty low to no impact on most stun locks. So now that he has it, I could focus on damage like that. I want to lower my HP a little more. I want to be within three uses. If I have to, I can panic dimate. One, two, three, and dark blow. Good enough. <laughs> I almost thought it was gonna cage me. I was like, get out of here. Stupid Bob. I will be free. And no items of interest, I'm moving on. Kill Bellers of the End of Ruins to get another reward. On Red ID? I don't think they get anything for Red ID. Do you mean the Psycho Wand? Killing the, uh, these things gives me Disco Brave Man. A little happy confused trap down. Have fun with that AI. Actually, if you're going that way, I don't need to go that way.
What does Belra even drop on Red ID? Could you clarify? I didn't think it dropped anything of interest. I don't want to fight you. I'd prefer if the team fought you. Please get away from me. Bonk. Feeling a little targeted. Yeah, this is the thing that I want to kill for potentially a uh, Psycho Wand. We're out of there. Probably another PD. Oh, no, no, no. We, we kill the Belrez there for Psycho Wand. Technically, I can kill those to get a Spread Needle. You can full heal me. It doesn't really matter. Although, I have to calculate how much I need here. Is this good enough? No, I need to do two more. See, both me pausing and going back for Dark Flow. We're still here below 10 minutes. I'm happy with that. So, yeah, so in theory, if I really wanted a Spread Needle, I would kill the Deldies, who I don't think of anything interesting, to get a 2 Chaos Springer kills. So our goal here is if we ever get touched, we die. So I'd prefer not to get hit. <laughs> it, would, it would be real nice if we didn't get hit. But so far, we're kind of manipulating them in a way where I'm not really threatened by them at any point. Only if I want to get the ones near the outskirts to does it get a little weird with me. I'm going to make sure I end more towards one side than the other. So that way I can hit the head easier. Oh, I was actually near the other one. I didn't see until now. I think we're doing an okay job killing these. But I, I absolutely cannot go beyond a certain point with this character. So it's important I end it here. Because now I can Dark Flow. I don't have to be like right against it. But it might deny me a Dark Flow swing, if that makes sense. Because I just got to hold forward while I'm swapping. So I have that time to correct myself, and then it's Dark Flow o'clock time. But you can see its health. Whenever I do it, it loses like 4,000 plus. If I'm lucky here, the boss is going to go right, slow down, stop, and let me hit it twice. I'm probably not going to hit it, but I'm going to go for the wild swing anyway. Let's go for it. Uh, it did like a thousand there. Better than nothing. But sadly, we're going to have to use the safety trimate. The odds of me getting clipped by something stupid are pretty high here, speaking of which. Uh, I'm going to go to the other side. <laughs> Team no. So the team, unfortunately, I don't know if they intended to do that, but they lined up with each other. So Falls actually had only one target possible. It was always going to shoot to the side. So whenever you see that, make sure to move to the center so you don't die. So even if it had targeted like the middle, left, or right of the players, it will always hit that left side in the, or right side in that situation. Ooh, unfortunately, several of the player, well, one player doesn't have buffs. Rip Dango. Hmm. We're lucky I might be able to vice here. Ooh, big damage. I was not expecting it to stay close to me. Interesting. No short cycle? Hmm. Okay. GG. Fast boss. So I got a little less ATA from the shield compared to Red Ring itself. I thought it was 10 ATA difference. I think it's only 5 looking at it. It is useful though. It makes less one miss a whole lot less. As well as my Dark Flow. GG though. Oh, look at that. Still sub-13. I'll take that. Consider considering I did like an 8 second shop detour because I forgot Dark Flow. I think I'm happy with that. See, I'm going to go roughly money neutral again. That's all that really matters in the run. I think growth's fixed. So I think overall I have a little a little shy of 90 eggs, and I think I have a little over 90 PDs. That's not too bad. I have to tell my phone alarm that I'm about to pause. But sadly, chat, we have hit time to go. So we'll listen to a little bit of Bomber Man as we talk about things. So how do I feel the session went overall? Uh, well, at least there was a Heaven Striker drop today. 
We did some RBR before it rotated out. We might do more before it ends. It's kind of nebulous what it means by the 27th. If it's midnight, morning, evening, normal reset times. It's never clear, unfortunately, with the events. So we'll see. If there is nothing... If it's still up Saturday morning, we will do it Saturday morning. I will put it that way. Otherwise, assume this is the last Easter episode. Slash stream. So I think from that standpoint, uh, we leveled... Basically, all of the characters we wanted to level, the Hugh Neural got a few levels throughout the event, and the Huga Seal went up, I think, almost 10 raw levels. Our Raw Cast went up, I think, 3 raw levels. We leveled a Force from 0 to 130 <laughs> in this stream. Most of our Forces went up 1 to 2 levels. So we have a very good selection of all characters, and I think gradually our equipment is slowly improving. So at some point, we just have to kind of bite the bullet, I think, at some point, and do more harder seabed runs or something. If we really want to get, like, the true endgame items from either seabed or tower, potentially. But I think for the most part, we've acquired a ton of PDs. So if we end up doing challenge mode in the next couple of months, I definitely have more than enough to make three or four weapons. So I've built up a big amount of PDs just for that. And if not, it will go towards spheres, which I think I have four currently. But I think from that standpoint, I don't really have too much else to add. Hopefully everybody had fun. But sadly, as I said before, I do have to go for now. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. Hope to see you again in either the next part or the next time we play PSO.